Welcome to another video. Today it is part four of the new look 6080 sew along. Today we're going to be constructing the jacket lining. So let's get started. Okay, so now that we've finished our shell, we get to sew our lining. How exciting. So this is the back piece and I have it still with the crease here. And this is the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance that you would usually be sewing at if you would cut the panel out without the extra here. So what we need to do is find out from our facing piece and this is the back neck facing and we need to find out how deep this is which is three and a half inches so what we're going to do from this mark here we're going to sew down three and a half inches and a back stitch there this is the little mark we've got on the bottom so we're going to sew from there two inches up and back stitch and that is the two inches that is the width of our facing at the back so three and a half inches down at the top two inches up at the bottom we are then going to press those so they form pleats and tack them into place but I'll show you as we go okay so I've sewn the uh, back together three and three and a half inches down and then I have kind of formed a pleat and top stitch that down along the a top stitch that down in the seam allowance and I've done the same down the bottom so I'm now going to go and press it so that we've got a nice big wide box pleat in the back of the lining so that will give us our wiggle room for when we're getting our jacket on and off so this is the wrong side here and I've pressed the pleat in and then from the right side you can see here it's kind of sewn down to where the facing's going to come to but then we have it open so that there is as I say all that wiggle room for when you're putting your jacket on and off and the same at the bottom it's sewn down to where the facing is going to be and then is open from there now this is my kind of made up method for lining uh, this kind of jacket I wouldn't recommend you use this method for a coat uh, most people would draft a separate pattern piece for their lining and take off all of the width of the facing and obviously add seam allowance and sew the lining to the facing but I'm actually going to mount my facing on top of this and top stitch it down so this is kind of just a way that I have made up and I like it but like I said I wouldn't recommend it for a coat I think it's going to work for this little jacket but for a coat I think you need to do it uh, do a lining properly but then most coats that you buy should come with lining included in them so we have to basically construct the jacket entirely again and I'm not going to show you step by step because it is literally the same thing sort of so so the side back panels to the side back so the side front panels to the side front stitched together at the si shoulder seams stitched together at the side seams okay so i've sewn the lining together in the same manner as the main body of the jacket and i have after making the first one i'm on clearly on my second one now as the fabric's changed but i discovered that if rather than close it the way i wanted to if i left a opening down the side then i could turn the jacket through that and then slip stitch this closed so I've sewn the bottom two inches of the side opening up normally and back stitched I've then lengthened my stitch to a basting le length uh, to about here back stitched and then sewn it normally to finish it so I'm now going to pink all my seams press them open and once it's pressed open I'm then going to rip out the basting stitches and the reason that I want to press it open with the stitches in there is so that I get a nice even press and an even seam which will help me sew this up properly later so I'm going to go trim everything with my pinking shears and press everything what I will show you is when we get to the sleeves because we're going to do something slightly different than we did with the main body of the jacket okay so I have sewn everything together with the right sides together so I have then 
trimmed and pinked all of the seams and pressed the princess seams towards the center front and center back and then I have pressed the side seams open and the shoulder seams open so we're now going to sew the sleeves together and then sew the sleeves in Okay, so I've done the same thing with my sleeve lining as I did with my sleeve. I've pressed up the hem prior to sewing the sleeve seam together just because it's easier to do whilst it's flat. The next thing that I'm going to do I, is deviating. This is my second time making this jacket, as I think I've already said, but I'm going to actually cut off a quarter of an inch off of the hem allowance allowed on the sleeve and that's because the last time I made this the very first one which is that one there I didn't cut this off and the sleeve uh, li lining and sleeve main fabric ended up being exactly the same length around the opening which isn't really that much of a surprise seeing as they're cut from the same pattern piece but it did mean that the lining was prone to peek out just a little bit so i'm thinking that if i remove this quarter of an inch and then sew that this new raw edge to the other raw edge then it will allow this this particular piece of the lining just to sit that little bit inside of the sleeve and not peek out i'm still going to do the same thing at the top once i'm going to when i sew this in i'm going to sew in with a three eighths of an inch seam allowance around the top of the shoulder cap rather than the five eighths of an inch and again that will give me my up and down wiggle room on the sleeve for putting on and taking it off and especially as we are removing a little bit of length from here at least that's the theory but we need to sew it with the he that press open like that so that we just have the crease there for the memory of where the uh, hem is going to be and we're going to sew this right sides together at five eighths of an inch up each side seam of the sleeve so i've sewn up the seam of the sleeve i have pinked the edges and i have pressed it open i've sewn a line of e-stitching around the sleeve cap at eight five eighths of an inch now i'm going to pin this into the lining obviously wrong uh, right sides together and then what the difference that between this and the shell is that we're going to sew this at three eighths of an inch and that will give us an extra quarter of an inch of wriggle room up and down the sleeve with our lining piece so we're going to pin this in matching up the notches so this is the double notch so this is the back we're going to match up the notches and then sew at three eighths of an inch Okay, so now that we've got our sleeves in, the next thing we're going to do is pin our facing to our lining and we're going to sew it together around the outside edge at a quarter of an inch. So you're going to need to match up your shoulder seams, you're going to need to match up the side seam here, you're going to need to find the centre of the facing and match that up with the bottom of our pleat. And as I say, we're going to base that together at a quarter of an inch the entire way around. Okay, so I have sewn the facing, wrong side of facing to right side of lining, and I've done that at a quarter of an inch. And I've now gone around and pinned the inside of the facing down. And you want to do that by matching up your seam. So the side seam there, the shoulder seam, you want to match the uh, centre back with the centre pleat that we made earlier. Same with the lower pleat here. And you kind of, you need to do this flat on a table and you need to kind of smooth everything down and with with it still flat put the pins in flat the whole way around so once you've pinned it all the way around we're then going to top stitch this edge of the binding to the lining and again i have my blind foot on i've changed back to my purple thread and i'm going to as i say top stitch the entire way around Okay, so my lining is top stitched down the whole way round. And the reason I decided to do it this way is because if I had removed the this portion of the lining, uh, which is the facing portion, I'd have ended up with some really weird and probably unusable uh, pattern pieces for this front piece here, which is, again, like I say, why I chose to do it this way. Um, I have I have done this with other jackets and it's worked so I kind of hope that it's going to work this time I think it will but as you can see because we would top stitched our pleat down to the three and a half inches that's starting nicely at the bottom of our facing and again we top stitched it down to two inches here so we do have that extra room that we need for 
the uh, the movement in the lining and also our sleeves are stitched in at three eighths of an inch rather than five eighths of an inch so there's some latch, uh, there's some room there will be some wiggle room with the sleeves as well so if you have any questions at all please let me know in the comment section down below and i will do my best to answer them for you i really hope you've enjoyed today's video if you have please give it a thumbs up if you haven't yet please subscribe and i'll see you again very soon Bye.